We continue our podcast today of the prophetic writing series. We're dealing with the book, The Beginnings, and our topic today is the, uh, the creation account, uh, the biblical creation account. We see that, um, uh, we mentioned previously in the overview that e- Ezra was on record stating that the Torah had been burnt with the sacking of Jerusalem and that he and his colleagues undertook to rewrite the Torah. And in that account, they state they wanted to show everything that God did from the beginning. And in our research, we, uh, we realized that most of their uh, beginnings account came from Sumerian uh, myths. And we realized they weren't, re- they weren't rewriting what was written in the account previously, but they were styling their accounts on, on a new, um, uh, reflecting a new uh, Genesis account that wasn't known to them before. And uh, later on, uh, we realized that they were writing with a survivalist agenda. But that's, uh, that's covered later in this, in this particular book. So Ezra wanted to show everything that was done from the beginning. And in doing this, he styled his Genesis account on uh, uh, Sumerian and Babylonian myths. And uh, we noted that uh, most of the religious accounts that were uh, written at that time in, in the Levant and in Mesopotamia that they have the God speaking directly in their work. And if they didn't have the God speaking in their work, people wouldn't have regarded these writings as highly. So we see that the the Israelite uh, priest uh, made a conscious decision to reflect uh, God speaking in their document. So one must realize that that, uh, it isn't actually God speaking uh, in, in most of the cases, but it's the priest depicting what they wanted to depict. And then secondly, with the uh, naming standards of the documents, um, we note that uh, in the, in the uh, Torah, most of the books uh, are named after, in, in the Hebrew after the first few words in the, uh, in the book. For instance, uh, Genesis starts with the Hebrew word Bereshit, and it means in the beginning or in a beginning. And um, when I was reading through uh, George Smith's book, The Chaldean Account of the Genesis, he's uh, speaking of this, doc, uh, this clay tablet he was looking at. And when he looked at the back of it, he saw imprinted there, and uh, the name was Enuma Elish in, in, in the Babylonian language. And that meant when above. So we see that they named uh, their writing after the first two words in their, uh, uh, their account of the Genesis. And it was called When Above from the first two lines. So we see that the Israelites adopted this naming standard that was utilized by the peoples in Babylon at that time. And if we look at the older books of the, of the, uh, of the Israelites, for instance, the book of Jasher and then the book of the wars of the Lord, uh, we see that these weren't named in this, in this way. So um, it was a new thing to them. And uh, they styled that on the uh, Sumerian Babylonian uh, naming standard event. We notice that the book of Jasher and the book of the wars of the Lord, because they were changing their accounts, they could no longer use these records. They just redacted them back into documents and then they discarded them after these documents were written. Then we see that the, uh, the creation account, the Hebrew creation account, and they started off uh, basically and in Genesis 1 2. They say the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the word for deep there is abyss, uh, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Now, in the same sense, these, uh, these Sumerian accounts depicted that everything started uh, from a water mass, and, and the, the impression. Uh, that, that one gets from reading these documents is they believe that this water mass was always there and that uh, that was the home of the gods and everything was created out of the water. And in the same way, the, uh, the Genesis uh, biblical account is styled on these uh, Sumerian accounts. Uh, for instance, Enuma Elish, um, this is uh, George Smith's account, um, uh, from the first line, it says, When above were not raised the heavens, so the heavens weren't created yet, they were in the waters. So when above were not raised the heavens, uh, and below on the earth the plant had not grown, and the abyss also had not broken upon their boundaries. So what they're stating there, that the abyss hadn't produced the land yet, and it was a water mass. So we state that and we, we uh, show various quotes from the uh, Sumerian accounts. So we see that they are actually styling this on. And then in the Babylonian accounts, um, uh, in the Hebrew account, they say that dry land 
is caused to appear. And that's Genesis 1.9. And in a similar sense, um, um, uh, in the Song of the Ho, it actually speaks uh, and it says, um, uh, Enlil, who had made the seed of mankind rise from the earth, uh, not only did he hasten to separate the heaven from the earth and the earth from the heaven, and it also goes on to say, uh, and the world appeared in its correct form. So in a sense, the biblical account, the Genesis account, uh, also uh, shows the, uh, the world appearing in its correct form. So these, uh, one can clearly see that they're actually uh, creating a, a similar scene that's shown in the Sumerian accounts. And then in, in, in day two of the, uh, the Israelites' creation account, they show the, uh, the separation of the waters from the waters and um, states in verse 1, verse 6, And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And that's one of the accounts that's shown uh, in, the, in the Enuma Elish, and they, uh, they show the separation between the, uh, the waters. And um, I'll just get that for you over here. Um, in Enuma Elish, uh, tablet 4, and it says, uh, uh, And the Lord rested, gazing upon the dead body, that's the dead body of Tiamat, and he creates the, uh, the, uh, the heavens uh, and various things out of her body. And it says, while he divided the flesh, uh, he devised a cunning plan, he split her up like a flat fish into two halves, and one half of her he stabilized as a covering for heaven. And he fixed a bolt, he stationed the watchman, and bade them not to let her waters come forth. So they put her body into the heavens as a covering and left the water uh, in that covering. So in a similar sense, um, uh, the Israelites are now having the waters at the bottom and the waters at the top, the waters below and the waters above. And in the same sense, this is what Enuma Elish is stating, that the waters were established. And then uh, both accounts, the Hebrew account and the and the, uh, the uh, Babylonian account, they create the stars in the heaven uh, in the firmament, uh, below that covering and below the waters in the Hebrew account. So we see that they are very similar in that respect. And then we show that the, uh, uh, that the, uh, the, uh, the vegetation was created, uh, and in the Babylonian account it said that the, the vines and the wheat uh, spr sprouted out of the ground. And in the same way, in the, in the, in the, in the Hebrew account, they said that uh, vegetation was, was sprouting out of the ground. Now, in, in day five of the Israelites' account, they have uh, sea life and bird life created. And Genesis 1.20, it states, Then God said, Let the waters teem with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth in the expanse of the heavens. And while I was searching this in these... Uh, in these Sumerian accounts, in, in the context of Scripture, Volume 1, I came upon this, uh, this uh, story that was written. It's called The Disputation Between the Bird and the Fish. And it states as follows, Father Enki tied up the marshes, growing uh, their reeds young and old, in the ponds and large lakes. He made the birds and the fishes uh, team. And in the uh, lagoons, he gave all kinds of living creatures as their sustenance, and so placed the abundance of the gods in their charge. Now we see it's very similar to the Hebrew account. And, and the fact that when speaking of the, the birds and the fish. And then speaks of giving this uh, abundance into the charge of the humans of the earth. It, 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 one can see from Genesis 1.28 that this is precisely where they got this from. And uh, Genesis 1.28 states God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves. So God gives them uh, dominion or, 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 or to rule over the, the fish and the birds similarly to, to what's stated here in the disputation between the bird and the fish. So one can see it's clearly, clearly uh, styled on that. And then at the... Israelite is account on day six, the living creatures are created. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle and creeping things, beasts of the field after their kind. And so it was so. And then we see in accounts like the Eridu Genesis, 
they speak uh, uh, of that same thing and they say um, when um, An, uh, An Enlil, Enki and Ni Hursaga fashioned the dark-haired people, they had made the small animals that come up from out of the earth, come from the earth in abundance and uh, had let there be as befits gazelles, wild donkeys, four-footed beasts, etc. So here in the Sumerian accounts, it has these animals coming up from out of the earth, similarly to what's shown into the, uh, into the uh, Hebrew account. So and then we see on day six with the creation of man, it, it speaks of the Elohim uh, speaking amongst themselves in Genesis 1.26, uh, and it goes on, and, and they say, and, and, and say the gods, let us make man in our image. Uh, and we see that this connects the Israelitish ties with the Canaanitish polytheistic past and ties in with the Sumerian creation account where the gods created man. And in the uh, Sumerian account, uh, this particular one where they're creating man, they, uh, the, 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 the Babylonians show that a, a god, uh, the head of a god was removed, and as the blood gushed out onto the ground, the other gods came and they fashioned uh, the sand and, 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 the, and, the, and the blood, uh, in a sort of clay-like mixture, and they fashioned the man. And in that sense, this man uh, took on the divine nature. So that's covered in the book and shows clearly how that, uh, how that uh, those are styled in the same way. And we see that the Jewish priests named the first man Adam, which related to the old Babylonian Adamatu, meaning dark red, dark red earth, and the word Adamu, meaning blood. So in a sense, this is a man created out of the blood and out of the soil of the earth, as was shown in their accounts. We showed, too, that when the Israelites were in the uh, captivity in Babylon, that when they got there, the, the Babylonians had a king list. They had an a, um, antediluvian anti king list, a pre-flood king list, and they had a post-flood king list. But in some of the copies, uh, as noted in, in, in Thorkiel Jakobsen's book, The Sumerian King List, one see that they uh, gave the impression that there was a continual list from the first man up until the kings. And the Israelites wanted to uh, have the same reflected in their account. And the first king in the Babylonian account was Alulim. And the fact that this related to the first man that was created is, is, can be seen in his name. Alu meaning a spirit or a ghost, and Lim was an epithet for God. So what they were depicting there was the first man that was uh, created out of this God and had the spirit of the God within him. So they wanted to style that in a similar sense. So we see that uh, the creation account, the many parallels, with the, uh, with the uh, Sumerian accounts and, and also in the Sumerian accounts, uh, they speak, uh, and we provide the quotes in the book, of, of the gods wanting to create uh, these uh, men because their reason for creating them was that they were doing all this uh, loathsome work, this drudgery, digging canals and things like that, and they wanted to have man created, and once man was created, they could enter their rest. And this is one of the reasons that the... Uh, that the Israelites show God resting on the seventh day. And um, one of the reasons, too, in, 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 in showing the seven uh, days of creation was that in the, in the, in the chief uh, creation account of the uh, Babylonians, the Enuma Elish, it appeared in seven tablets. So that coincided with the seven days, and they, they wanted to reflect that. But much more is contained in the book, and uh, one will see clearly that they styled us on, on Sumer Sumerian and Babylonian texts. Uh, we're going to end this, uh, end this podcast here. The books are available on Amazon.com and uh, BookBaby.com. Just do a search under Ernest Austin Adams. Thank you for watching.